So the 6500 XT is out, and it's, well, honestly what we should have expected. If you really push this thing to stay within its comfort zone, it beats a 580, and sometimes way outperforms my expectations at the very least. But if you don't, it's a disaster. It really is all over the place. Like, <laughs> apparently it can be close to a 1660 Super, which I really didn't expect to see besides below 1080p, but then in the same game, it might fall below a 570, depending on the settings you choose. So I do think the point about performance when it comes to the 6500 XT is that this is firmly a low-end card with limitations. But at the same time, I am forced to point out that benchmarking this card with ultra textures and 1080p is pointless. It really just proves you can count to four or or actually maybe that you can't count to four. This is a low-end card. If you manage it and act like it's a low-end card, you can get it to perform almost like what AMD wants you to believe it is, which is some sort of card designed for gamers that punches above its weight for its die size, which in specific scenarios it does. But the problem also with that statement is that AMD, no one's buying it. You didn't design this for gamers. It doesn't have a small amount of RAM and lack in coding because you designed this just for gamers. I mean, that's somewhat true that the only use for this card is as a holdover card for low-end gaming. It's not for people doing editing. It's not for miners. And that will probably make this more available than the other options. But you didn't try to do this. You overclocked a MX class graphics card so that you could desperately try to service availability and capitalize on that. That's what AMD did. That's what this card is. And there's both good and bad things to point out about that. The good things being if you do manage it, I think it's stronger than a lot of people give it credit for. It's actually in some scenarios above the performance I expected, but it also has so many limitations that this really is just a low end gaming card for people with no other options and, and and really the other options are horrible this card only exists because of how bad they are like like even if we look at its performance with pcie 3.0 which is of course much lower than 4.0 oftentimes especially if you don't manage your vram usage its competitors there don't strike me as consistently better uh even at 3.0, it's around a 1650. And when I'm seeing used 1650s go for more and every other card that I would want to compare it to like a 580 or you know anything, a 1650 Super, they're all going, at least in the US, for far more than what this card was buyable for today. And so I guess that gets us to buyable. At $200, it is acceptable, I guess. But I do not think anyone should buy this for more than 250 And at over 300 it is a complete joke unless you have a weaker card you can confidently sell for more than 300 which, again, I, I actually do find that unlikely as much as I point out how bad the used market is right now. Uh, but if you can get this for 200 and sell your old, I don't know, RX 560 for close to the same price, then do it, which I did. I got the 6500 XT for MSRP on launch day. And I'm excited to do some odd testing to really see where it can perform okay and just how easy it is to make it perform like crap. I actually do want to test this one myself. And by the way, I got this for MSRP and I didn't wake up at 8 a.m. Eastern time and make sure I was there right when it dropped on Newegg. I woke up hours after it came out, got the Pulse Edition for MSRP. And in fact, many hours after the launch, I guess not many, but maybe like two and a half, three hours after the launch, I still saw some models appear on Newegg at MSRP and I put them in my cart and just decided I don't need them. In fact, when I check multiple micro center locations of places I used to live and even the closest one to me, which is like a two hour drive, it's in stock close to MSRP. So yeah, actually people may want to remember, I literally said in my availability leak that day one might actually be spotty because of shipping delays. At least in the US, this seems to be more available than I expected on day one. One, and I don't even think this is half of the volume arriving yet. I believe that at least half is still stuck in ports and yet to get to where you are. So I know there's going to be someone, you know, in some other region of the world outside the US who's like, well, I couldn't get one on launch day. And it's like, yeah, that's how all of these RDNA launches have worked. The shipping gets to you later and AMD hasn't delivered most of it even to the US yet. So over the course of a month, there will be many more arriving, clearly, based on what I'm seeing on day one here, than the 6600 XT. And, um, 
you know, still though, this is going to be doomed to be remembered as a bad graphics card. I mean, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll know that I tweeted that guys do not pay more than 250 and I know this is going to get universally bad reviews no matter what. But I can't help but feel like most reviews panning this card the hardest are comparing it to cards that don't exist anymore at the price they claim they are at. When I look around, the other options, even compared to this and PCIe 3.0, look dreadful, again, at, at least in the U.S. right now. So I think you have to understand honestly how much the other cards cost that are comparable to this. And then also understand this point that I really can't illustrate enough here. Sub-150 is dead, all right? And it sucks. I don't like it. I'm, I'm not telling you this to normalize the situation. I'm telling you this to warn you that if you're not getting this card because you're waiting on a 3050 with its fake MSRP like every other NVIDIA card to launch, you're waiting for no reason. If you're waiting for ARC, you're at least waiting till quarter two, and it's probably going to be about the same performance at about the same price, and who knows what other limitations it will have because Intel is... Well, new to making discrete graphics cards. I'm tired of telling people to wait. Just wait, just wait, just wait. I don't think better stuff's coming, guys. The sub $200 market is permanently fucked. And there are a lot of people with cards breaking asking me, now what do I wait for? You're not going to get something much better. The market's where it's at. The PC gaming pricing singularity that I warned about in videos for a year now is starting to appear right in front of us like i said it would again if you want to leave this market I, I understand and absolutely if you find like a 1650 super especially if it's new i don't know below 200 then get that i mean no one's telling you not to do that if you have someone that will sell you an rx 580 and it, it works well for under 150 or something or under 200 Sure, yeah, get that. I mean, I'm not telling you not to, but I am saying that it's not as easy to get those cards for a reasonable price as a lot of people are making it out to be. And I actually don't think this opinion is as controversial as some people are probably going to make it out to be. Most reviewers I've watched say that, yeah, this card at $200 unfortunately makes sense in this market and you shouldn't pay more than $250. And I would agree with them. But I am directly calling out people who say nobody should buy this out of principle because that is definitely coming from people in a place of privilege. No one is saying that unless they already have a graphics card they can use. This graphics cards is for people who have no other choice. This card isn't for you, and I know you're making fun of it, but there's a lot of people at their wits end who are probably tired of being told to wait for the next thing that I honestly am starting to conclude might never be coming realistically. Although I do want to actually get to the most important part of this video, which is that I have some pretty sensitive information about what's going on with the pricing of the 6500 XT over the next few months and what's likely to happen with pricing on the low end for the next couple of years and how this is going to affect RDNA 3 and upcoming launches. This is going to be an explanation of what I mean that we're at the pricing singularity. But first, an ad from a sponsor. I may not be able to stop Reese from monitoring me, but I can protect myself while I'm online. Today's video is brought to you by Atlas VPN. It's 2022, and I would assume you want to start the year off right, don't you? Well, the wrong way would be letting anyone who cares to, and a lot of organizations and governments do care to, monitor your online actions, track your data, and prevent you from enjoying streaming content that's usually arbitrarily locked away from being watched in all regions of the world. Atlas VPN protects you from all of that and even blocks ads and malware for you, including malicious links and ad trackers. Actively tries to get you the lowest price a company offers, subverting their attempts to charge you more based on location or operating system. And and it works on unlimited devices. It only costs $1.39 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And all of this for that price is done without massively slowing down your internet. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount. You can get a three-year subscription for just $1.39 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee at the link below. That's right. Moore's Law Z fans get access to this special deal. And clicking this link really does 
help the channel. You can't stop your dog from watching you, but you can't protect yourself online if you use Atlas VPN, and you can also help Moore's Law is Dead. Click the link in the description, help Moore's Law is Dead, and help yourself in 2022 with Atlas VPN today. All right, so let me get to the most important information in this video, especially for someone who is at their wits end and is trying to buy a card, any card, so they can just game okay for the next few months and actually use their desktop. A lot of the end of the supply chain sellers I'm telling you, are truly making very little money selling these cards under $250. And AMD knows this, and they're helping them keep day one pricing low. That's all I can say about that right now. And I've said it before, so this isn't actually the first time I've said that. But at this point, I have a lot of confidence that there's something going on here. And that... There is a reason day one pricing stays lower for AMD launches. It, it isn't just availability drying up, but I, I can't say more than that for now. The, the point, though, is that around launch, this card is being pushed to stay near MSRP by AMD. And after launch, they're going to stop pushing. Now, I don't know if that necessarily means directly after day one today. But yeah, basically what I'm saying is, despite this, though, a lot of AIBs are planning for their MSRP models to gravitate towards around 240 to $260, you know, so around 250. And, and curiously, even that horrible triple fan model actually was $300 at launch. So yeah, I, I think most AIBs understand that even if they're going to make a little bit amount of money and they're going to insist on making that 10% cut, that that's still probably going to put most of these models around $250 unless it's a hot seller. But I don't really expect it to be a hot seller. This is a card for desperate people. And because I don't expect it to be a hot seller, you know, one of those cards that doubles in MSRP on average, I can't help but at least feel good about laughing at these scalpers that are 100% getting burned trying to sell this this much above MSRP. Again, I don't think anyone's going to pay for this level of performance lacking a bunch of features much above MSRP. And I think the availability is going to make it so these scalpers get burned hard. And hopefully it starts stopping some of them from doing this to every single launch. But going back to pricing information, there's a lot of people that would say, well, okay, if right now it's probably going to gravitate towards $250, why did an AMD just give it a $250 MSRP? And the actual answer is that AMD believes they can make the card around 200 in the launch window and that although it will gravitate above that i am told directly they expect this thing to gravitate back down pretty quickly by quarter three so the reason amd chose a 200 dollars msrp is they are hedging that around launch it will be and less than half a year later it will go down to that price as well and once shortages in GDDR6 and other component pricings improve, it will be easily holdable at 200 or maybe even a little less that. And so that's what they decided the right call was. Let's not pretend it's a $150 card, but also let's not say it's 250 because we think for the majority of its life, it will actually be around 200. And actually, I don't know that that was the right call. I'm going to say it. I honestly think... AMD should have lied about its pricing like NVIDIA is, or not given it an MSRP. I'm saying that objectively, right? I don't own any stocks. I, I'm saying objectively, I think that's clearly the right call here for AMD, is it not? Like, how many big tech tubers burned NVIDIA for the 3080-12 gigabyte not even having a price? I, I know Hardware Unboxed did, and he should be commended for that. And I, I'm sure a few other channels did, but I feel like from what I saw, only hardware and box was harsh enough about it. And I don't know, I'm not going to name names, but a lot of big tech channels that are panning the 6500 XT are apparently okay with NVIDIA just removing pricing and pretend that a lot of these other cards have an MSRP. So I'm forced to conclude that AMD should have just pretended it's a $120 card because apparently that's the right business move because this community doesn't get the difference between real pricing and MSRP. Although the fact is they kind of did give it a $120 price if you adjust for, well, actually, yeah, yeah. I, I want to talk about this too. The $120 price point, why that old adage that there's no such thing as a bad product, only bad pricing definitely holds true with this graphics card. Imagine if you will, 
if this graphics card launched in the price range we all know it probably should have been if at least it was launched a few years ago and that's 120 dollars I am sure that if this graphics card launched at $120 as a sort of RX 560 successor that five years later is over double the performance at similar power usage, most people would have accepted its limitations. They would have said, yeah, it lacks this encoding and it lacks that and that sucks. But hey, what do you expect? This thing more than doubles the performance in its pricing tier. And it's an entry level graphics card. Beggars can't be choosers. There's no such thing as a bad product, just bad pricing. And do remember that while the RX 560 had a launch price technically of $100, that was for the cheap two gigabyte models. The four gigabytes actually went all the way up to like $140 often around its launch, but let's just call it 120. Yeah, I know that if the 6500 XT was $120, no one would care, but take the 560 now. All right, now make most of its components cost 50% more due to shortages and supply and demand. Then make the shipping six times higher and then account for the fact that mm, maybe not RAM, RAM might not be double the price it was all the way back when the 560 was out, but it's probably higher, 50% higher. Then you get to about a $200 card. And to the people that dispute what the cost to make this card is, the shipping cost is public information. You can take a $10,000 per wafer cost, which is public info from TSMC, even though they've raised prices since then, by the way. And you can do the math on how many of these dies you can fit in that wafer with like 95% yields. You don't even need a website to do it. You can do the math on your own. It's simple math. So anyone disputing the cost to make these cards, it's actually provably close to that based on public information. If you dispute that, what it costs to make these cards, you know how to Google shit. Okay, this is public information. And I guess what I'm saying is the people saying, why doesn't AMD just launch the 5500 XT again for $170? To hit my point home, I'm telling you, if AMD launched the 5500 XT right now, which I don't even know if they can do the 590 because GDDR5 isn't really even produced anymore in high numbers. If they were to relaunch the 5500 XT, Half of its components would cost at least 30 to 50% more, and the RAM would cost twice as much. It would be probably a $300 graphics card anyways. And you can say that's a better deal, but it has a 50% bigger die size. They would be able to make less cards. The situation is not as simple as you think. And I don't think you can simply just say, oh, things will get better. Don't reward this bad product because yes, above 250, it's horrible, but near 200, it's unfortunately the pricing singularity in a world where energy costs are massively up and people are having trouble heating their houses in the winter or buying food or the cost to preserve food in a grocery store is up because you use fuel to do that. All of these things that are keeping inflation, which will be about 20 to 30% long term over where it was about four years ago, whether you like it or not affects your toys just like it affects everything else. And TSMC has announced that five nanometer is 70% more expensive than seven nanometer. And while I think components costs and RAM prices will come down from where they are literally right now, I've already told you what's going on with inflation. Guys, everything is going to be at least 20 to 30% more expensive than where it was a few years ago. And we know five nanometer costs 70% more than seven nanometer. In other words, if you're hoping for something better, you're gonna be, I don't know, waiting a year for the 7500 XT to drop. And it might be twice as strong as the 6500 XT, but it'll be $300 or more. And so looking at this card's horrible reviews, I do truly wonder what's gonna happen with RDNA 3 reviews, because unless you lie about pricing, apparently, you're not allowed to price a card where it's actually going to cost to buy it. And I'm wondering how many reviews we're going to see of them being like bad, bad, bad until people just accept inflations here. And who knows? Honestly, if I had to put money on it, I think what AMD is likely to do with the RDNA 3 cards is lie about their MSRP because, well, that's what this community has taught AMD they should do. NVIDIA lies and then they lie. They remove MSRPs. They sell cards directly to miners. And yet I see countless comments of people saying these companies doing the same things when they're not doing the same things thing you know at a certain point you've just got to say don't hate the player hate the game and maybe amd should just start playing the same game nvidia is because this market is telling them that's the only way to win and it's really depressing to acknowledge that's where we're at both in this community and in graphics card pricing i mean yeah i i, I guess <laughs> i don't know what else to say except that i'm just thinking nostalgically about a decade ago where I think a lot of people tell you that the mid-range used to be where good price performance started. That, that's not even true a decade ago. 
a decade ago, oftentimes the entire product stack was a fairly understandable price performance level off across it. Like the 7970 was double the price of a 7850 and it was double the cost. And the 7750 was half the performance of a 7850 and it was about half the price. That stopped being true a few years ago with Pascal, where you basically did need to pay probably about $300 unless you got one of those bargain 580s to get good price performance. But now that's just the mid range is going to become 500. The low end's going to become 400. Unless we don't let that happen, which is the point I want to close on in this video. I've already showed you what it costs to make these cards. I've already demonstrated that you can literally Google yourself what the wafer cost is, what shipping costs are, what GDDR6 costs are to prove that you don't need a source. You don't need to talk to AIBs or AMD to know what the cost to produce these cards are. It's public information. Learn to Google. But the low end doesn't need to be above 300. It actually doesn't. And so, well, I think it's wrong to tell people out of principle not to buy a card they may be desperate for at $200. I am going to say, for the love of God, people, do not buy this up above 300 because I'm sure that, well, the low end is probably going to be above 150 forever. It's probably not necessary that it get above 300 So if we can do that at least, I don't know. I've already covered since the 3060 flood video and other ones that AMD's literally told me contacts that they're talking internally about how they want the entry level to be $400. It doesn't need to be. They can afford to keep it lower if we don't buckle and don't give another inch. But $200 is what it costs. It doesn't need to be $350 unless we let the market get that bad ourselves. And I hope you enjoyed this video. It's hard for me to say the word enjoy when this isn't an enjoyable situation and I don't like it. I don't like the 6500 XT, although I am excited to really do some weird testing with it here and just see when I can make it perform okay and if I can make it look really strong by cherry picking, but then also make it look insanely weak with other cherry picking. I think I'm going to have some fun with this card, but I guess, yeah, besides the review I'm going to do for this card with hopefully some actually useful testing for actually settings you would run with this card, I don't really want to talk about it anymore because uh, it's been talked to death. And then look, I've talked about this card a lot recently because I think there are a lot of important conversations that can use this card as a touchstone about what's happening to PC gaming. But besides that, we've had those conversations. I'm fucking sick of talking about this weak card. And there's frankly many more important things to discuss. I've got upcoming leaks potentially about console refreshes that are both good and bad news. There's a lot changing in this market. And a lot changing that needs to be discussed like i don't know microsoft buying activision nvidia trying to buy arm my next guest will be a business attorney going over the legality of the monopolistic practices of many companies going on in this industry right now patrons get to ask this expert questions don't miss that chance the chance to support moore's law is dead because it doesn't pay to be painfully honest and give you an honest opinion even if you don't agree with me I never go along with the flow if I think it's the wrong take. And even if you don't agree with me, I, I just, we can't do this without our patrons. So please consider supporting me because it pays me, pays Gerard, pays uh, Dan, hopefully pays soon a couple other people to hire onto this team to employ during these uncertain times. And uh, yeah, otherwise just make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Moore's Law is dead. And of course, thank you for watching.